Alrighty guys, so Sasquatch here. We are Revelstoke Dam. See the pen stocks there? One, two, three, four, five. So this is the BC Hydro Revelstoke Dam Visitor Center. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna get a tour of BC Hydro's facility here. Very nice of BC Hydro to have this. Transformers, power lines, all the power that's generated in here with these turbines, the pen stocks spin in the turbines. It then comes out through here, through the transformer, right? Upstep transformer, push it down to power lines, and then substations convert it back into like more usable voltage. And then you got your transformers on the actual power line near your house, which downstep it even further for you. They've got the floodgates, sluice gates. So this is a gravity dam. They call these gravity dams. So the, the Mica Creek Dam, that's a embankment dam, which basically just means it's constructed full of dirt. They, the embankment dams typically have like a concrete core, like a rock and uh, earth and rock core. And then they're just surrounded by dirt. There's different designs, a little bit of spalling, a little bit of crazing and cracking and stuff, but nothing too bad. Obviously BC Hydro would keep on top of that. You can see the rock, right? It's cut right into the rock. And so this is the visitor center, Revelstoke Visitor Center. Alrighty guys, so Revelstoke Visitor Center. The Columbia River and its tributaries. So Mica, King Basket, Lake Revelstoke, Revelstoke, Arrow Lakes, Duncan Lake, Columbia Lake. Oh, look. Coralin, Lower Bonington, South Slocan, Kootenai Lake, Kootenai Canal, Upper Bonington, Brilliant, Hugh Keneally side. All these dams, right guys? These are all dams. The Duncan Dam, Grand Coulee. Chief Joseph Wells, Rocky Reach, Rock Island. That's Lake Revelstoke or Revelstoke Reservoir. Oh, guys in the man basket there. So yeah, generating station over there. And then the sluice gates, that's the floodgates. And then that's the Columbia River over there. Columbia River Valley. If you follow it down there, that ultimately takes you to the Mica Dam on the Big Ben Highway. We did that though before, so make sure you watch that video. So we're just at the top of the dam lookout here. Pretty cool, man. 300 some feet up, right at the crest of the dam, the lookout, see everything here. Penstocks, guys. These are the penstocks. Spins the uh, turbines, generates power. Sending all the power out so it can be used. And then you can see all the power line infrastructure. You got the spillway, so you can see all that water, that beautiful, uh, glacial fed Columbia River water. So that the tail race below the car park. So that's the tail race. That's where the water exits. And then the penstocks are here. So the water's coming in. It, it's being stopped by the dam, creating head pressure, right? Head pressure of water. And then it's coming down through the penstocks, spins the turbines, which then sends it over to the transform area to relay the power to the actual bit itself. Fourth largest river in North America, Columbia River. 670,000 square kilometers. Same size as France for the drainage basin. It is nearly 2,000 kilometers long, 100, 1,200 miles for you Americans. Stretches from the Canadian Rockies to the Oregon coast. The Columbia River is the longest and widest river in the Pacific Northwest. So we're walking back towards the visitor center. So this was the penstock. So we were way up at the top there, guys. Talked about the penstocks, the sluice gates, the transformer station. So it's like I was saying, guys, intake. That'd be your trash rack. This is your pen stock. That's your turbine. That's your generator. And that's the transformer. This is your draft tube right here. This is the draft tube. This is the tail race scroll case. So these all work together, right? And ultimately it, all it is is water's coming in. It's flowing down, spinning this and then pushing the water out. Right. And they just meter the flow of everything. Revelstoke light and power company built a log dam and a wooden frame powerhouse on the Ilchilowit River in 1898. In 1909, the city of Revelstoke built a larger concrete dam and a brick powerhouse about 49 meters downriver from the original. For over 50 years, from 1909 to 1960, the second powerhouse supplied Revelstoke with electricity from first from one and later two Francis turbines. So that's the old powerhouse, guys. And then this is the actual turbine. This is the actual turbine from the powerhouse. 95% of BC's hydroelectricity is produced using hydropower, a renewable resource of energy made by the force of falling water. Head pressure, guys. That's what's going on here. All kinds of metering devices and measurement tools. 
Oh, you mill rates on all that stuff. Mechanics. Electrical safety handbook, very important. Ooh, electrician, that's pretty cool. Synchroscope. That's a current meter. Flowing through the penstock, such as used at the hydroelectric power plant, can be measured by averaging the flow velocity over the entire area. Propeller type current meters can be traversed over the area of the penstock and velocities averaged to calculate the total volume. In 1984, the Rebel Swoop Dam held four turbines and generating units with room for two more. BC Hydro was planning ahead, knowing British Columbians' population would increase and the need for clean hydroelectricity would only grow. In 2010, a fifth unit was installed to help provide 500 megawatts additional generating capacity to power thousands of more homes and businesses. All six units working at the same time can provide about 30,000 megawatts of clean power to support British Columbia's growing needs. That's not bad. So this is the crane for the gates, the tail race gates. This is the crane for the head gates, as well as the sluice gates, right? So. Sluice gates, floodgates, to prevent overflowing of the dam or the reservoir. We saw the spillway. The scrancher crane runs on a section of track and just lift this gate up, boom, lift this gate up, boom, right? And same with these. And then the intake would be on the other side and you'll have a trash rack on that to prevent a bunch of garbage and wood and everything flowing into it. And then the water comes down and the head pressure is basically the height of the water from here to here creates pressure, which causes the turbine to spin which generates power. It's all about metering flow, guys. All about metering flow, controlling flow. If your RPM isn't right, you're not gonna generate power properly. It's a whole thing. And then this is the construction of the dam. This is them building it. Buddy's hard at work there. Lots of rebar, lots of form work. Well, they got a ringer crane here. Those are fun, man, ringers. Quite the gantry on the back there. Look at that boom section, man. Woo, it's nice. Yeah, the ringer. Those are, those are heavy lift cranes, man. Serious, serious cranes. Bunch of destroyed concrete everywhere. Kind of finished product of forming and all the hard work you put in. And then tunnel network. Both the concrete dam and the earth fill dam are laced with network of tunnels. The tunnels give BC Hydro workers easy access to more than 800 instruments that constantly monitor conditions within the two dams. These essential instruments include thermometers to measure temperature, piezometers to measure water pressure, water meters to determine water speed and flow, stress and strain meters, crack detection meters to give us advanced warning about any fissures that may be developing inside the dams. Yeah, concrete likes to crack. When BC Hydro closed the diversion tunnel in October 1983, the Columbia River began to return to its natural route and filled the Revelstoke Reservoir behind the completed dam. The Revelstoke Dam spillway is essentially a safety valve designed to release water from the reservoir if it gets too high. BC Hydro built the powerhouse with six unit bays, four to go in the service right away, and two will be held in reserve for the future. Each unit bay is designed to hold one turbine and one generator. A turbine is essentially a huge wheel. It converts the energy of falling water into mechanical energy to drive the generator and produce electricity. And this, the whole thing is a gravity dam. We use subsoil that dates back to the last ice age, about 11,000 years ago. Packed tightly, this glacial fill is as dense as concrete. He's shot creating. That's a fun job, shot creed hose. Oh, good example. Earth fill, concrete dam, and powerhouse. So this is what you would call a hybrid dam. Because it's got two, right? And you can see the Big Bend Highway behind us, right? So that's the Big Bend. Follow up to Micah there. It's at 175 meters, 574 feet, and 457 meters, 15, 150 feet long. The concrete dam is the most visible part of the Revelstoke complex. It contains over 2 million cubic meters concrete, enough to fill nearly a quarter of a million full-size concrete trucks. Parked bumper to bumper, the trucks would stretch for over 1,600 kilometers. At only 122 meters high, the earth fill dam is shorter than the concrete dam, but a lot longer. It runs 1,158 meters, 3,800 feet along the west bank of the river. To build it, BC Hydro had to excavate more than 7.6 million cubic meters, 10 million cubic yards of earth and rock, and then pack nearly double of that amount in with heavier finger grain soil. The powerhouse sits in the middle of the riverbed, immediately downstream of the concrete dam. It contains the massive turbines and generators that take water pouring through the dam and turn it into electricity. Eight years of nonstop construction, spillway in action, with cool process, man. After we received the water license in December 1976, we awarded the first construction contract in 1977, completed the diversion tunnel in 78, began building both concrete and earthfill dams in 1980 and the powerhouse in 81, closed the diversion tunnel in 83, completed the concrete and earthfill dams in 83, installed the turbines and generators in the powerhouse in early 84, switched on the first two generating units in May 1984 and the second two in December. 
We built our own concrete factory on site where we could make all the concrete used to build the dam in the powerhouse. Concrete is made by blending various components, including aggregate made up of sand, gravel, stone, cement, and water. Lime too, actually. Romans put lime in their concrete and it's way better because uh, it, it's self-repairing when it has lime in it. The aggregate was mine crushed, screened, and washed more than three kilometers, two miles south of here and transported up to our concrete factory through a system of tunnels and conveyor belts. The cement was made in Kamloops, more than 200 kilometers away. We hauled an average of 500 tons of cement to the factory every workday. The concrete dam is constructed in 23 sections called gravity blocks. Because these blocks change in size with weather, they expand when it gets hotter and contract when it gets colder. They are separated by construction joints to absorb the changes. Sounds like a lot of fun to install. These hydro workers had to build up the concrete within each block layer by layer. Between each layer, they laid cooling coils filled with water to lower heat buildup within the concrete to reduce risk of cracking. Concrete produces heat when it cures, so you want to make sure that it's not producing heat for a long time because that'll affect the concrete as it's curing. It's very, very important, guys. Long journey to your house. Oh yeah, this is what I was saying, guys. So generator, turbine, transformer, power lines, substation, step down transformer, keeps moving. Oh look, there's another step down transformer station. Then it goes to the commercial customer. Then it goes to your house, right? And you can see the gradual reduction of the voltage step down transformer. And then these guys, these guys are going hardline right into the plant. So that's power delivery systems. 26 feet in diameter, 250 feet long, rolled steel, an inch thick. The pen stock Rebel Soak 5 unit was made up of segments of pipe that range from under three meters, 10 feet, to over 10 meters, 35 feet. The longest segments weigh as much as 72,000 kilos. Transmission towers, different types. The backbone of BC Hydro's system, moving high voltage electricity over long distances from generating stations to substations. There are more than 18 thousand kilometers of high voltage lines across British Columbia. Substations transform the electricity to lower voltages in a process called stepping down. So it's either stepping up or stepping down. So that's 100 meters, guys. And then you got the four meter line, right? And then distribution poles. So you got all the different styles of the power poles here. Once they are installed, the powerhouse will contain six of these massive machines, each seven meters, 23 feet in diameter and weigh about 200 tons. So that's an actual picture of it. It's the scroll case, right, for the turbine. Water comes in. These are the wicket gates. You, you can adjust those two to control kind of the turbine as well. And then you've got commutator bars and the generator to produce power. The amount of power you're generating is all based on your RPM. So if your RPM is out of whack, the voltage and power gets all weird. And so we're, we're looking at the generator hall, guys. So this is all the generators so this is where the power is being produced. This is the main show here, the operation. All the power is being produced in the generator hall and it's all coming from up top of the reservoir through the penstocks. And they monitor the RPM very, very intensely to make sure that it stays constant. From here, you can see the powerhouse is generating hall. It might look big, but it's actually only a small part of Rebel Stoke Dam powerhouse. Below the floor under each square covers is a turbine. An isophase bus duct on the right transmits the electrical energy from the generators to the transformers located behind the wall. Oh, the bus bars, yeah. Transformers then step up the voltage from 16,000 to 500,000 volts so the electricity can travel long distances more efficiently. It is stepped down again before reaching BC homes and businesses. Right there, those are the disconnect switches. Wicket gates. Located inside the scroll case, these gates open and close to regulate the amount of water entering the turbine. The draft tube is where it exits, shaft connects everything, and then the generator controls it all. So the Mica Dam is the king, the Bennett Dam is next, Revelstoke Dam is close behind it. Le Choy Dam, Seven Mile Dam, Bridge River, Hugh Keneally Side, Duncan Dam, Kootenay Canal, Lador, and that, it just basically shows you where everything is. Alrighty guys, so that was amazing. Rebel Stoke Dam, we wanted to do that one for a while. We finally got her. So yeah guys, power generation, dam infrastructure. Really good experience guys, eight bucks. Or if you get the uh, BC Hydro Pass, you're good for Stave Powerhouse, which I did. Make sure you check that one out. You're good for Rebel Stoke, as well as Peace River Dam, the Bennett Dam there. So yeah guys, that's gonna be it for me on this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell icon to get notified so you don't miss any of the videos. And uh, Sasquatch Prospector out. Oh.